Are you using LinkedIn to search for jobs? In this video, I'm gonna give you a walkthrough of all the ways that you can use filtering to get a little bit more detail out of the jobs that LinkedIn returns back to you when you're job searching. Okay, so here we are on LinkedIn as Tina Miller. Tina Miller is a marketer looking for a senior marketing manager position. If we go over to jobs, gives you this interface with this single uh, search bar, which I don't particularly like. So I always go to slash search. And now we are on search results. And one thing about the search on LinkedIn is it actually uses your profile, right? On this page, I didn't put in anything and it's already showing me marketing positions. So that's something to take into account when you're using LinkedIn. The robustness of your profile actually makes a difference. The more work experience you add, the more skills you add. Now, if you're a career pivoter, all that stuff is probably annoying <laughs> because you don't wanna do what you did before. So that's something to take into account. I wouldn't necessarily call this a good or bad thing. It's just something to be aware of that the algorithm that is searching for jobs and surfacing those jobs to you takes that information into account. Because I didn't put in anything and I'm already getting marketing positions. And it's assuming a level, it's assuming a lot of things about me. So let's go ahead and do a search for senior marketing manager. Okay, so just right here, and I think a majority of the people stop right here, right? And they just start to scroll and go page, page, page. Okay, so they scroll, page, scroll, page, 40 pages up to the top of my, 18,000 results, 18,500. That's a lot. There's no way I'm gonna probably make it even past 100. So there's a few things we wanna do here, right? If we've got some ideas and thoughts around the kinds of companies we wanna be at, or maybe even companies in particular, those are all things we can do. But let's understand the default. By default, these jobs are sorted um, by any time that they were posted. And I think it's kind of roughly trying to do it by when they were posted, not always, right? Because this one's 20 hours ago, this one's one week ago, four days ago. So these are actually trying to do it via relevance, uh, but fairly new, right? None of them are, are too old uh, or stale, so to say. So now we can say only in the past 24 hours and we're down to 1900 results, right? So if we want immediacy and we really wanna be focused on that, the other thing that shows us is for senior marketing manager, 2,000 jobs in the US were posted in the past 24 hours. So we need to be searching this on a regular basis. You know, daily might feel overwhelming, but it does go to show you that they're changing all the time. Um, and I'm recording this on a Friday. I bet if this was a Monday, that number might even be higher. So that's one way to start to filter it down. What's the most recent? Now that doesn't really have any of what matters to me in the job, that's just recent. So then there's experience level. One thing to account for here is this is discerned by LinkedIn. This is generally not entered by the company. I see a lot of people post things making fun of companies for it saying three to five years experience, but when they filter here, it says entry level. That's not the company, that's LinkedIn. So here it's LinkedIn kind of trying to infer the experience level. So that's something to take into account when you use this filter it may not be super accurate. It's not one that I love because it's a you know it's it can be all over the map on how a company frames experience. But, you know, we could say it's definitely not, you know, the two bottom ones, so we can say we'll take all three of those. Right? And so that knocked off 600 jobs. There could be particular companies that we want to search at, and so there you just type those in. Um, you know, these are the ones that are showing up just, uh, I think on this page is how it's doing this. Um, so we won't use any of these right now. Then job type, Tina's looking for full-time work. So we'll filter that down. So now that knocked off a few. And then Tina wants a remote job. So now we're down to 485 jobs. That's a whole lot less, right? From originally 18,000 that we started at. Now 450 would probably still take you a while to skim through. So maybe we want to filter these even further. So let's look at all filters. Now here you start to get a whole nother layer of information. So actually here it goes back to how it was sorting. Um, I forgot that this is where it was. So I can say most recent, right? These are gonna be the most recent within the last 24 hours. Then I do show 458, it's not gonna change, but this is the job that like just got posted 
you know, this one was 15 hours ago, seven hours ago. That one's promoted. This is another thing to look out for because you might be thinking, hey, that's not, you know, in the same time sequence. This one's promoted. So that tells you a few things. That tells you this company really wants to fill this position. They're paying extra to have it promoted, but LinkedIn is also going to prioritize those jobs. So sometimes that's gonna somewhat th throw off the search results. Um, but here and now these are all time-based, right? And you can be one of the first to apply to these jobs because they were very recent. And these things are happening in real time and search engines have to cache, which means they sort of you know, hide, they, they process it and then they surface it. So this one was only eight minutes, but this one says nine hours. So again, give them the system a little bit of grace, I think. I don't think 24 hours is gonna make that much of a difference, but just in case you're seeing that and curious why that's happening. And so here are some of those filters. You see those again, but then you get a few others down below. They have this category of green jobs if you're looking for more environmentally focused jobs. I don't know how those are done. I don't think the company necessarily identifies it. So it, again, might be LinkedIn trying to discern that. You can search for things that have easy apply enabled. This is one of those things that a lot of people have different opinions on. I'll tell you my experience. What happens is the amount of candidates when easy apply is turned on that apply is way, way higher. So my signal to noise ratio becomes incredibly hard. And so I think companies might struggle with that. So I think it might depend on the kind of position. If it's more of a junior position, they may want easy apply, you know, senior position, maybe not. So it's not something I prioritize. I generally recommend against not using it. I don't think it has a massive effect on whether you get in or not. Again, that's just my opinion. There's not much like hard facts or science out there on, on whether that makes a difference or not. But if you just wanted easy apply jobs, let's see. Look, see, that's an interesting thing right there. Only 10% of the companies actually even use that feature. Even less, we went from 485 to 40. So a lot of companies don't even really use it. Um, it and that's kind of generally my take. We don't use it at Teal. Um, so let me go ahead and turn that off. Now location, if there's a particular place you want to focus on. And then industry, right? So let's say Tina's got real good experience in tech but not necessarily in advertising or in wellness and fitness. But if she wants to work in wellness and fitness, let's go ahead and turn that on. So one result, can't get more specific than that. Yeah, again, this is a, one of these is probably promoted. Yep, and it's a, a senior sales manager. So this is a demand generation marketing manager, right? That's probably something that Tina could apply to. It's remote, may not be in her comp. You know, she may not be that interested in dental. Um, but it goes to show how you can do that. All right, so let's just bring up these filters one more time. I think you guys get the idea. Um, you can do it by job function. That should be kind of implied because it's marketing. You can try different titles. Um, and then there's some others that we'll talk about, but this one's really cool under 10 applicants. If you know people in your network, salary ranges, benefits, things like that. So those are the kind of on the surface things that you can do to control the search on LinkedIn. Now, once you've identified some jobs that you're really excited about, you gotta move them in your process. And you're gonna hear me talk a lot about how you should use many, many job boards because different jobs are posted on different job boards. Even though almost every job board has the ability to save it, I highly recommend that you set up a tracker and you put it all in one place. You have a central air traffic control for all the jobs you're excited about. Teal offers one for free, a little biased, but I think it's great. Um, if you have the extension installed, you're gonna get this cool little duck here on the side of your screen. And with the job selected, you can bring that up. And you can use this to quickly, you know, get a, a view of the jobs. Promoted jobs, for some reason, tend to be a little funny. But here's a, a regular organically posted. We automatically try to detect the salary for you in here. That, that must be in the body somehow for some reason, but I doubt that it's a $20,000 a year salary. So we do our best to parse it, but it doesn't always come out perfect, uh, you can override that later. Uh, so LinkedIn is I think, estimating here. When it's here, it's usually estimated by LinkedIn and when it's in the body, uh, yeah, here we go. This is variable employee equity. That's where that number came from. So if there's multiple numbers, we usually take the first one. So you can see the skills. We can go ahead and save that job and we will look at it on Teal. And now we can evaluate it for the keywords. Again, it's marketing, demand gen, events, leads, automation. Those are all things that I know Tina's interested in because she's in marketing. It's a remote position. Um, maybe not the healthcare she's really looking for and then it's dental. Maybe it was looking for more like 
you know, uh, other forms of wellness. So we'll rate it a three. We'll move it over to a applying as we think about it, because maybe we'll customize our resume, maybe we won't. But now it's in our job tracker. We can come back and reference it later and, uh, and think about if we want to move it forward in our process. Okay, so those are some ways to leverage LinkedIn to run a little bit more of a refined job search, get a little more detailed, go down from those tens of thousands of results down into the hundreds and tens so you can get real specific. And then what I would recommend you do is take the URL that gave you those filters and save it somewhere, bookmark it even. That way every day you can just click it and you see the fresh results every single day. All right, so those are some tips and tricks. Hopefully you found that helpful. If you have any questions or comments or things you'd like to see us cover in a future video, please let us know. We are here to help you land a job you love. So best of luck and see you soon.